bench grinder safety in regards to facilities maintenance, or even if you have a home shop, uh, bench grinder safety is very important. So just some basics. This is what a basic bench grinder looks like. Some of the main components. Uh, you have the spark shield, which looks like a metal plate that sits just above your grinding wheel or wheels. Uh, you have your clear eye shields. You have your work rests, sometimes called tool rests. Uh, and that's where you rest your work that you're grinding. And your bench grinder should be bolted down. It shouldn't just be free sitting on your workbench. Uh, for safety, it really should be bolted down. Uh, you want to use aluminum oxide wheels for ferrous metals like carbon steel. Um, for uh, non-ferrous metals like brass, copper, and aluminum, you want to use silicon carbide for all those. Otherwise, what happens if you try to grind brass or copper or aluminum uh, on an aluminum oxide wheel like these blue ones you see here, the wheel will fill up with that material and clog up and cause the wheel to potentially fail. Um, and it can be very dangerous if one of these wheels explodes. So you never want to grind soft metals on an aluminum oxide wheel. That's very important. Um, there's specifications for the gap between that work rest and the wheel. And then the tongue is quarter inch. And that's max. So if your work rest is above an eighth of an inch gap, more than an eighth of an inch gap, you need to adjust it and close that gap up. Um, before grinding, uh, wear safety glasses, wear good fitting uh, gloves. There's some debate on this. There's two schools of thought. Some people say you never wear gloves when using a bench grinder because if your glove gets caught on the wheel, you can pull your hand into the, the grinding wheel. Uh, so your, your company, I'm sure, will have its own regulations on that point. Uh, don't wear loose-fitting clothing, whether it's a jacket. Don't wear jewelry. Uh, keep long hair tied back. Uh, and then inspect the wheel for uneven damage, chips, wear. Uh, again, if you, if you see a wheel full of you know brass or copper or plastic, don't use it. It's going to need to be replaced or it's going to need to be dressed to get rid of all of that. Um, material and either use a safety gauge or a measuring tape to adjust your tool rest and the eye shield as needed. Uh, that spark spark arrestor up there by the tongue should be a quarter inch gap. Um, periodically, especially when you install a brand new grinding wheel, you want to do a ring test. You tap it in four different locations. Let's say at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 8 o'clock. And it should make a nice ringing sound. When you gently tap it with the back of a screwdriver, as seen here, don't hit it very hard. And if it makes a thud or just a dead sound, that wheel has potential cracks in it that you can't see and it should not be used. So the ring test is important whenever you replace your grinding wheel. Um, the wheel dressing tool that's used again to dress your grinding wheels. So if someone mistakenly grinds aluminum, brass, copper, or plastic on the grinding wheel, you can use that dressing tool to clean all that material off the wheel. You would turn the grinding wheel on and slowly and gently apply this wheel dressing tool, those little star-shaped wheels, against the grinding wheel as it's spinning and you'll see it'll clean off all of that debris. Uh, anytime you start up a bench grinder, you always want to stand to the side. Don't stand directly in front of it. And these, these wheel dressing tools can be bought just about anywhere. Granger, McMaster Car, I believe Harbor Freight sells them. And they also have another type of dressing tool that's diamond coated. It's more of a flat uh, T-shaped tool. So that's another option. There's different attachments, different type of bench grinders. You see here, you can also have a wire wheel. Uh, you can have uh, a sander, and you can see a belt sanding attachment here on this one. 
You also see there's a work light above, and that doesn't take any old light bulb. That takes an industrial coated light bulb that's designed for this application. So make sure you use the correct light bulb, not just any light bulb in there. Um, lastly, if you don't have room on your workbench to bolt down your grinder, you can bolt it to a pedestal or a pedestal mount grinder. Ideally, this pedestal should be bolted down to the concrete floor for safety. Um, and one other point is when you're using a bench grinder, it's going to create a lot of dust, and that's not good for your lungs, and it can create quite a mess, especially if you're trying to keep your shop clean. So one solution is to have a collection vessel, be it a five-gallon bucket, something with a lid on it, and you can buy some of that metal ductwork and uh, use hose clamps. Um, they make accessory kits for your, your bench grinder, but basically it's, it's tubes that attach to the uh, outlet on the back of your, your grinder, and then the other end of the tubes would go down to your collection vessel to collect all the dust. So if we look at that other picture, you, if you look closely on the bottom rear of that cover, on the jet bench grinder, you'll see that there's an attachment point there for a collection hose. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment for any topics you'd like me to cover in a future video. Again, before anyone in your shop uses a bench grinder, they need to read and understand the safety instructions for that bench grinder. Use a proper wheel material. Um, make sure you dress it as needed. Keep that, that uh, work rest adjusted up within an eighth of an inch or less clearance between the wheel and the, and the work rest. Make sure it's bolted down. Always wear safety glasses.